Consumers around the world are getting relief as oil prices fall from their eight-year highs amid signs of cooling tensions between Russia and Ukraine. International crude benchmark Brent is trading around $92 a barrel after reaching $96 earlier in the week. Stock markets are also in the green, reversing three days of losses. Japan's Nikkei index led the rally in Asia, jumping more than 2%. That follows gains on Wall Street that saw the tech-heavy Nasdaq surge 2.5%. Investor sentiment is also getting a boost from signs of easing inflationary pressures in China. Consumer prices in the world's second-largest economy rose 0.9% in January. That's down from 1.5% the month before. Now for more, let's go to Danny Yusen. She's a financial analyst at AJ Bell in Huddersfield in the UK. Welcome back to the program, Danny. Now, oil falling from its eight-year highs this week amid these easing tensions, but they remain elevated. And this Ukraine issue isn't the only thing affecting oil prices around the world, right? So could you talk about current market conditions and how these could affect prices going forward? Yes, yeah, so of course, the tensions uh, between Russia and the Ukraine forced prices up. And when we saw an easing of that, we did see them slide back. But you've got to remember that demand is still outstripping supply, which is why oil prices have been elevated, remain elevated, and in fact, are already creeping back up today. What's happening is Asian markets in particular are chasing some of the cheaper forms of oil, which is then pushing up things like Russian crude as well which just generally means that prices are going to stay high, and I think they are going to continue to creep towards that $100 a barrel mark. Now, there's been a lot of criticism of OPEC in that it hasn't been able to deliver on the increased the promises that they made to increase the production, and that is having a massive impact at the moment. And unfortunately, we can only see that continuing because while the prices for things like gas are so high, we've also got refineries upping their production in a bid to take advantage of those rising prices. Right, and this is all feeding into higher inflation in developed and developing economies. Now, how can monetary authorities around the world, maybe in the U.S. in particular, try to reverse this trend and tame inflation without causing a recession? Is that even possible at this point? It's incredibly difficult, isn't it? I mean, established economic theory suggests that when you've got rising prices, high inflation, that you need to raise interest rates in order to bring those price rises down. But the problem that central banks have is that a lot of these price pressures are coming from global issues, from those supply chain crises, from you know, those commodities that people are buying. And then you factor in things like what's going on between Russia and Ukraine. And those things are just something that central banks can't deal with. What we've got is a lot of governments trying to bring in additional help, maybe by lowering VAT on things like food or here in the UK, we've got extra money for people to help deal with those rising prices of energy. But yeah, things are incredibly painful. And the biggest problem at the moment is certainly we've had the latest inflation figures out in the UK today. And we know that that number is, you know, historical. It is just going to go up. And we're expecting things here to hit over 7%. So I'm afraid that governments and central banks have a really difficult um, decision to make. How do they deal with this? Do they raise rates and potentially cause more problems for cash-strapped consumers? Or do they just try and let things filter out? Because, of course, a lot of these price pressures are coming as a fact that the economy is now waking up after COVID. And we just simply don't know what is going to happen to those prices when all the things start to unravel.